Hey everyone, welcome to the Camino Cafe podcast. And can I tell you, pinch me, pinch me, because I am here with the Carol Payne. And you guys have all heard his music. He is a famous singer songwriter and he has been walking the Camino Portuguese and we have been having a blast. So welcome to the Camino Cafe podcast. Thank you. So we're going to do a little bit of an interview. We're going to do a few songs and well, we're going to be two pilgrims. And have fun. Yeah, we're Make just here to talk. All right, so let's just start off with how did you decide to walk the Camino? Well, it started really the first, my first knowledge of the Camino was uh, at college, at university, at UCLA, where I was a Spanish major, and then linguistics and teaching English as a second language. And I, of course, studying Spanish, I learned about the Camino. And I thought, wow, 1,200 years of people walking this path, how incredible. It seems such a distant thing at the time. And then fast forward, uh, several of my friends walked the Camino, and I love to travel. And unfortunately, my wife passed away uh, last November, and so there was a spiritual quotient to it, and I wanted to just take her with me on it. And um, so it's a combination of all those things, really. Yeah, it was just the right time. It was the right time. And how did you decide to walk the Portuguese route? Uh, no falo português, but I don't speak <laughs> <laughs> Portuguese, but it just, I really didn't have time to do the Frances. Yes. Yeah. And um, this, it just seemed like a nice bite-sized thing to do. It's a little more than a bite. But uh, it was a mouthful, but a beautiful, tasty mouthful. Yes. And where did you start? In Porto. And this was your first Camino. How are you feeling now? You got to Santiago yesterday. Yes. How did that feel walking into the city? Uh, it felt exhilarating, to say the least. I mean, just you, you feel proud that you can do that. And you look back at the experiences and it makes you feel like you can do anything. You know, you feel like you, the things that you've had to deal with on your own, because I'm walking, walked on my own, which is another story. Yes. But um, yeah, I just feel empowered mm. to like, that if I can do that, I can walk for five, six, seven hours every day, then, you know, then I think I can walk to the store. <laughs> <laughs> And that in California, we get in our car a lot. So. That's true. You probably don't do a whole lot of walking there. Yeah. But uh, I have done, but not this much. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about your life prior to a coming and walking in Camino. You've had quite the career as a singer-songwriter. Well, uh, uh, humbly, because so. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm very fortunate in that um, my brother, who is a yogi. Yes. Um, uh, before he was a yogi, he was uh, in, a, in the magazine world in advertising. Oh, okay. And one of the big contacts he made for me, he connected me with a guy named Bobby Womack, who is a R and B legend, and uh, it opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, I was fortunate to make my living starting when I was twenty, playing music, and then I started getting to writing for other people, and Bobby introduced me to. So his albums, and then there was a bunch of people that I did songs for, Rod Stewart, Patti LaBelle, yes. from Peter, Paul, and Mary to Snoop Dogg, basically, <laughs> right. that I've written songs for. And so, but travel is always, when I really first started writing, travel is what inspired it. You know, mm -hmm. just higher highs and the lower lows that you get from getting out of your comfort zone, especially traveling alone. And the less you bring with you, the more you assimilate yes. to where you are. And that led me to this situation, which I was coming with a friend. And at the day of, he had an illness and he couldn't come. And, oh, wow. Which was unfortunate, but I I don't mind traveling by myself, but he made all the arrangements. And so oh, I gosh. ended up being, <laughs> you know, doing something, it would have been fine with a couple of people. But yeah. I was kind of staying in some apartments instead of being like next to the actual. And talk about Two Song Tuesday. This is something that you do every week, Facebook Live. Right. It's a little bit about what it is and maybe do one song. Okay, a Two Song Tuesday is something that really started with the pandemic. And when my favorite artist, uh, Bill Withers, passed away, 
I just felt compelled to go on and do a tribute to him. Oh. And that, and a lot of people showed up and I thought, and there's um, a mentor said, look, this is the golden time for you to be online because people are hanging out. And need it. And we so, need it inspiration. I, so I started doing this. I first did it on Thursdays. It was like an hour or so, but I felt that I wanted a shorter version for me and for them, you know, because I don't, you, you don't always want to hang out that long. Yeah. So I came up with this idea for two song Tuesday. Alliteration always helps. Yes. And um, so it's one cover song, one original and improv. So it's two, two song Tuesday plus. Okay. And so I usually start off with a cover song and then um, I do an improv and I take titles from the chat and pick one or all of them and do a song about it. Okay, so Harold and I recorded this interview at my apartment and we had some technical glitches. So Harold was nice enough after we recorded the show, he re-recorded some songs for us and that's what you'll be hearing throughout the interview. So here's the first song, Out of Many, One People, an original song by Harold Payne. There's a colorful island nation in the greater Antilles, in the Caribbean Sea, that has given more than its share of culture and music to humanity. Out of many, people that's what they say in Jamaica out of many one people that's the Jamaican way the Spanish and the British and Jamaican Maroons indigenous peoples and some pirates too from Kingston to Ocho Rios to Montego Bay African, Irish, Chinese, Scottish, German, Syrian, and Lebanese. It turns out even better when they're all mixed together. Out of many, one people. That's what they say in Jamaica. Out of many, one people. That's the Jamaican. Mental ska, dance hall, rhythm of the reggae, dub toasting, sound system, rock steady. So much good music to share with the world. Bob Marley, Bunny Whaler, Jimmy Cliff, Peter Tosh, Debra Decker, Shabba Ranks. It doesn't stop and it all comes together in a sweet Jamaican patois. Out of many. That's what they say in Jamaica, out of many, one people, that's the Jamaican way. There's room enough for everyone and everything, including the Jamaican bobsled team. That's what they say in Jamaica, out of many, one people, that's the Jamaican way, oh, 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 that's the Jamaican way, that's the Jamaican way. Okay, that was Camino Magic. <laughs> Camino Magic. It was a beautiful thing. Thank you. So you brought your guitar. Okay, I got to tell you, that's my favorite kind of pilgrim that brings a guitar, right? You become very popular on the Camino. So how was it carrying it? And, you know, were you bringing it out regularly? Or were you kind of just keeping it away? Yeah, well, late? Uh, my, believe it or not, I'm a little shy about I, I It helps that where if my friend had come, he's, he would have been my PR man. Hey, uh, oh, my friend's going to play so... I, I, it's hard for me to go up and you know say, "Hey, you want to hear some music?" But I had some really cool moments. One was the, the, this Korean couple that was getting engaged, and this other Korean woman that I walked with for a while. She yeah. said, 
how about you come and I'll tell you a little bit about them and you make up a song and surprise them. So that was a really a, a nice moment. Wow. But my the amazing thing is my very first day on the Camino, I mean, it started off, I'm at the cathedral in Porto. Uh -huh. And I, I first of all, I met this uh, uh, guy from uh, Switzerland who showed me how to, you know, my backpack wasn't on quite right. <laughs> Then and then this, I was talking to him and some other guy from the U.S. was there and we were speaking English, and some Australian young woman comes up, and I was asking where I could change some money, and she said, uh, "I'll help you." And I go over there and my American Express. I didn't know the password because oh, usually okay. I use my my debit card. So she said, uh, "What do you mean? I'll get you fifty. Can I give you fifty euros?" And I go. You want to give me money? I, I'm not going to take money from you. So I mean, this is my first, you know, my before I'm even starting the Camino. And so I go, how about I give you U.S. dollars? Uh -huh. So I gave her some U.S. dollars for euros. But she was going to literally give me 50 give euros. Just give me 50 euros. Stranger I just met. So then I walk over and I'm getting ready to walk, start walking the Camino. Cut me off if I'm taking No, I love these answers. Are you kidding me? And... So these uh, two Dutch women are there and <clears throat> they further adjusted my back. I've never <laughs> worn a backpack before. I'm such a rookie. So, I love it. Uh, so and then I we're talking, her husband's name is Harold. So we kind of bonded. We talked for a little bit. And then she said, well, you, uh, I see somebody starting the Camino right there. And it was a woman from Sweden. She mm -hmm. said, maybe you should walk with her. That'd be great. So I walked with her for a couple hours. We stopped at a cafe. This is my first day. And uh, there was no seats available outside. So there's one young woman sitting by herself. So I wouldn't have done this, but she walked around and said, can we sit at your table? Yeah. She said, oh, of course. So we start talking and a half hour later, she, you know, she asked me what I do. And, and I get invited to her mother's paella party. This is my first day on the Camino. You're, this is your first day. You had an epic first day. Yeah, I mean, all these things happen. And so I get invited. She says, why don't you come and, you know, take Uber over and I'm, I'll take you home on the way back. And they were having a choir sing there, the other singers. And so I sang and ate and had this incredible thing. At the, uh, there's a mile long table of food, including paella. So that was my first day on the Camino. Your first day. Yeah. That had it all. Yeah. Wow. Camino angels, Camino magic. Yeah. No, really. Wow. Now, I was watching one of your videos. I think it was last Tuesday's video. Yeah. And you can't see it today, but you had a bit of a black eye. Yeah. I had some interesting experiences. <laughs> I was on the train from Porto and I was uh, taking my bag off of the top rack and apparently the zipper was undone and a book came flying out and hit me right here and gave me a big thing and guess what book it was what briarly your briarly, briarly guy my briarly guy <laughs> your briarly guy book literally fell and he was going you eye. better read my book more i had a big old black eye it's just barely, you know. Riley, he's still with us. He's still uh, with uh, us. Really? That is something else. Well, it looks a lot better now. So well, thank you. Yes. But so, I, I wore it as a badge of honor. Well, and, and you know, I think with Briarly, let's talk a little bit. You know, Briarly always used to talk about the practical and the mystical sides of our walks, right? right. And for the Tucson Tuesday people, these are the he's the yeah. godfather of, of the Camino and Right, 25 years of walking the Camino, writing guidebooks. He, I mean, he, he's the guy that probably is why we're sitting here today and we wouldn't know about it. So, so we used to talk about, you know, there were two sides, you know, of the Camino. There's the practical side and the mystical side, the spiritual side. So let's talk a little bit about the practicality. It sounds like you're, you're not a big hiker. This isn't something you're regularly doing in LA. I, I walk fairly. You walk, okay. And I, I... I have hiked. I live in an area. I live in San Pedro in the Los Angeles area. And there's right next to Palo Verde. Palo Verdes. And there's a lot of nice places to walk there. And I, I do that fairly often. But I'm not, I don't call myself a hiker. And I definitely am not 
not doing 10, 12, 15 mile hikes on no. a regular basis. No, especially in LA, right? Yeah, okay. really. Okay, so from a practicality, because I think sometimes we Camino veterans, you know, we can kind of romanticize a little bit about our Camino, right? Because the pain's done. Now we've arrived. Yeah. We're feeling uh, happy, oh, yeah. Right. We forget about maybe blisters or or whatever. So let's talk a little bit about, aside from the black eye, <laughs> what was the toughest part for you physically? Well, my in my case, I had a heel issue. A heel issue. Before I came, and it stopped me from training. Ah. Oh. Uh, and so, and the doctor said, well, it's probably not going to get better. You might want to postpone this, but it's, it's not going to hurt your heel, but it's just going to hurt. Mm. So it wasn't horrible. It yeah. was about a two and a half or three at the beginning of the day and about a four at, okay. at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, every time I stop and I take my shoes off and everybody you talk to, of course, had either blisters or <laughs> yeah. whatever. I mean, but that's part of learning how to take care of that self and taking a needle and doing that and putting padding around it. And it, it uh, people tell you, but to experience it yourself yes. uh, and and to like go, OK, I can do this. And even more empowering is the fact that that you can walk through the pain a little bit. Mm. And it was vale la pena. It's worth it, you know. Um, so that was really my whole, um, that and a few blisters that I learned how to manage myself. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the, the fatigue a little bit, sometimes <laughs> when it was a really long walk and a really steep hill. Yes. You know, but uh, I, it, it, it was more like the feeling if I can do this, I can, there's possibilities are wide open. Mm. That's really something coming from you because you've had such great accomplishments in your life. I mean, uh -huh. you know, not, not, I mean, very few of us get to do the type of work you do and have the um, success that you've had. Yet you're finding that coming and walking has given you new empowerment. Absolutely. And I, I walked did a walk in India, mm. the International Peace Walk, many years ago. Okay. And it was a similar sort of thing. Wow. And did you feel that way after that as well? Yeah, I, I yeah, I definitely felt, you know, and, and the idea of meeting people along the way from wherever and the, the spontaneity mm -hmm. of of just landing where you land and meeting who you meet and is 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 a romantic notion that is actually true that counterbalances the the blisters and the whatever, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's the, the two sided coin. And we all, most of us at the end, tell the romantic side. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, how about we do another song? Here's Harold with another original song. This song he wrote about a walk in India. It's titled, One Step. Take one step in the right direction. 
if I touch one heart along the way, if that one step can change the action, then my journey has not been in vain. Then my journey has not been has not been in vain. That is a perfect Camino song. What's the title of this song? One Step. One Step. And is this about available? Can people download this song? Yeah. Spotify, YouTube Apple Music, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Okay, everybody get that on your Camino playlist. And for those of you who have not walked the Camino or watching this for Two Song Tuesday, we hope you come and walk the Camino. And, you know, one of the things that we were talking about earlier today is that both of us have walked. We we walked because we were processing grief. Yeah. And we talked about, um, you know, that doing the walk, it's not in vain, right? And I think the things that we get to process, and, and more importantly, I think how we are after this, or when we tell people our story about walking our Camino, it may help someone else out there that's going through a yeah. similar loss that maybe we've had. I agree. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about, you know, how what is it about the Camino maybe that can help people who are going through a tough time? You know, how, how did it help you? Well, I, uh, my wife passed away last November. And so part of my reason for coming on the Camino was just in a way to honor her and to kind of help me go through this a little bit. And, uh, you know, meeting people along the way and the spontaneity of it and seeing how beautiful people are and life is and uh, just and waking up every day and, and the fact that everybody just has a backpack and there's no pretentiousness and uh, it's just, and everyone is open-hearted on the Camino. You know that, you know, in a way, it's almost like going to a yoga class. You know that <laughs> the people who are going to take a yoga class are probably pretty open-hearted people. Yeah. And so the the Camino uh, provides, as they say, yes. and uh, it just it allowed me to, you know, to process the grief a little bit. In, in addition to the joy of what was happening, there's the there's the romance of the Camino. There's in this case the the spiritual, you know, processing the grief, and then there's the you know physical part of it. Yeah. It comes with it, and it all blends together in a way that that kind of, you know, gets you through some things and make you feel more confident mm. going forward. That's for me anyway. I love how you said that it blended it all together, and it sounds like you had some moments maybe of joy again, and maybe some feelings of hope. Was it feeling like you could find a way to enjoy life a little bit? Yeah alongside yeah grief, I mean, right I'm, the grief's not going away but yeah i'm a pretty positive person and i would never like live in the the uh you know downward spiral or anything like that but but it really helped to um lift my spirits as with each step i took you know yeah. um, and i brought a little something that I was going to put somewhere and I don't know where it is. I found this right before I left. It was something that she wore. Yeah. So it, wearing this and knowing that I'm going to put it somewhere special here is kind of cool. Yeah. So tell us about you know, your wife's name. Tell us a little bit about you guys were married for a really long time. Yeah. Susan Nakagama. She was Japanese American. Uh, so I grew up in a town with a large Japanese American population. And um, she was a multi-talented person. Uh, she worked for the state of California. She started off, you know, uh, at the entry level, ended up being the assistant chief to the labor commissioner for the state of California mm -hmm. and, and handling the work of five people practically. She's a force of nature. And on the other side, she was very um, artistic, kind of a, she was a feng shui queen about in a life. And she was a, um, a great cook and a foodie and a fashionista. The clothes that she left behind, which I'm passing on to other people is like unbelievable. Anyway, she's a beautiful soul. And I was 
lucky to have those times. Yeah, she sounds amazing. Did you ever talk about walking together? To be honest, it wasn't her. It wouldn't have been her. Not her thing. thing. Okay. She's she's worked hard and she was more of a room service <laughs> person. To be honest with you, yeah, you know. Um, but, um, you know, she had her career yeah. and I had mine and we had our moments together. Would she be surprised to know that you're doing this? Would, would she have thought you would have ever taken something like this on? No, but she wouldn't be surprised. No. Because no. I did the walk in India. Oh, that's true. Mother, yeah. And she knew I, I liked to travel. And stuff, so. Yeah. So now you have the bracelet, the cross that you're going to try to find somewhere to place it here in this very special city. But if anybody has any suggestions, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I I'll think they're behind the heater over there. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be wonderful. Wow. Okay. So, third song. What's uh, you usually do a? I usually do an improv. An improv. Okay. So, um, usually what happens is I get titles from the audience that they put in the chat. But since uh, we're recording this, I guess it's going to be on you. On me. Oh, no. Okay. So, okay. so we, we know that this is going to be fun. We have not rehearsed this, right? No. no idea what you're going to say. Okay. And, uh, and if your dog has a request, that's okay, too. You know? Yeah, he might. He might chime in. Okay, so what do I have to do? You just give me a title or anything, uh, any title, any subject. I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, now. my gosh. Okay. Um how about the Camino saved me? Okay. So Harold is the real deal. The way that he can make up a song on the spot is absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, the song that we recorded at the apartment, you're not going to hear. But when he got home, he recorded another impromptu song with the same title. This guy's amazing. Here we go. Here's Harold Payne with the impromptu title that I gave him, The Camino Saved Me. Stuck in a job I didn't really love And everything I was doing just Didn't seem like enough and Somebody mentioned a walk That they took to Spain It just took a couple minutes to explain I knew that Camino would save me, and the Camino saved me. Where else can you go? People all over the world reaching out for each other. No countries. Nothing else to discover Just heartfelt people Walking that road All they got on their back is a little load And a smile on their face Everywhere The Camino saved me Made me realize Each other, that was enough. The Camino saved me. Oh, oh, walking into Santiago with all of my fellow travelers was a moment I'll never forget. Just about as good as it can get. Walking in the footsteps. hundred years The Camino saved me and chased away all my fears And I'll never forget the friends that I made along the way I Think about 
got it every day for me to save me. Yes, it saved me. And it won't be long till it saves me again. How do you do that? I don't know. How do you do this? My goodness, I can see why you are who you are. I mean, my goodness, to be able to just do a song just like that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you were to um, be able to go back and, and talk to yourself and say, I wish I'd known this about the Camino before starting, you know, because there's probably somebody that's watching that is going to be inspired okay. from hearing your story and they're going to come walk. What would you tell them? I would just say that, you know, uh, my friend who became my virtual Sherpa because he was, you know, did all the booking and stuff. It just, uh, I, I would say to leave it open to, for a little bit of spontaneity. And, and you know, I, I wasn't the uh, al albergue uh, hostel type where I in a room with 30 people necessarily. Yeah. If I were in my 20s, maybe I would have. Yeah. But I like being, I would book things that were closer to the action like next to an albergue, but a private room, yes. a private bath if possible, and book things that were right in the action. Like my friends have a hotel that's right down there and it's relatively inexpensive. And, you know, uh, the apartment thing is, you know, I had some, the other night I couldn't even get in my apartment because I kept turning the key and nothing happened. So I finally, I thought I was going to sit out on the be out on the street, and I knocked on a bunch of doors, and somebody finally opened. I said, "I can't get this open." He said, "You pull the door back and then turn the key." I would have known that. No, it was so anonymous. Yeah. You know? So I would say, try to have places that are close to the action if possible. Yeah, definitely. You know, and talk to somebody who is who would know that. Yeah. And how was your equipment? Your shoes were okay? Your backpack? Was there anything that you brought that you thought, oh, I never used it. I shouldn't have brought it. Or you wish you'd had a different type of equipment with you? I, I really liked my shoes. I, I had some hokas. Uh -huh. And um, I ended up doing these other ones because they had more heels. Brooks, they had more support in the heel uh -huh. since I had a heel issue. And I had good socks and I, I would just say that, you know, I, I, I had my baggage carried from okay. one place to another. Yeah. I used Top Santiago, which they were they were fine. Except the one time when I had to, when, when my bags were about three quarters of a mile away. Oh, no. <laughs> but that wasn't their fault. It was because it was a private, it was an apartment that was far away. So they had to go to a, a bar to pick up my stuff. But, yeah, yeah. Um, it's okay to have your bags carried. In my case, I had my, excuse me, guitar, which gave me the excuse to have another bag with, I brought too much, which everybody does. Yes. I brought a sleeveless puffy vest uh -huh. and a long sleeve. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And a jacket. And we just had some really hot weather. A jacket, yeah. And so I never used either of those. I finally used the rain jacket and the rain pants. Oh, because you came in on a rainy day. Yeah. How was that day? How it rained a little bit. Yeah, yesterday. the last couple of days it, it rained. It was, you know, I had on my rain pants mm -hmm. and my um, you know, rain uh, rain cape yeah. and my my rain jacket. So I felt like okay, I brought those, but I didn't need the puffy jacket and the and the puffy. I mean, come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> But you don't know until you're here, yeah, right? You know. Yeah. So what are you thinking right now? You, you've been in Santiago uh, overnight. Will this be something you'll do again? Will you do another Camino down the road? I, I, I would, you know, I'm going to think about it. But, yeah. Uh, and, and depending on my time, uh -huh. you know, I I might do like a, a week and then come back and do another week. And that kind of, that uh -huh. Uh -huh. probably fits my schedule better. And maybe travel a little bit as well. I really like to go around to Barcelona and Madrid and places like that. So it'd be nice to do a combo trip. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So what do you think 
is the one thing right now because you know for me the Camino doesn't stop in Santiago I don't think for right. any pilgrim mm -hmm. right so there's going to be stuff that will be happening as you go but if you had to say right now what's been the greatest lesson for you or what what do you think you're going to take home that you're really happy about well a lot of it was what I knew it was going to be I knew it was going to be open-hearted people from all over the world uh, reaching out to each other and it just validated really that you can go someplace on your own mm -hmm. and sometimes you get more out of it. It was a combination of the walking alone, which was good at times, and the walking with other people. Yeah, so you kind of did a combination. Yes. You walk on your own and then yes. meet people. And you've met some really interesting people along the way, yeah? I, I did. Yeah, do you want to say hi to any of them? <laughs> uh, well, um, the people that I walked with a lot were um, Joyce from um, Seattle, uh, uh, and uh, she and she's a, of Korean, from South Korea, and she introduced me to another couple that I did the um their uh their howley names their their um, english names are yeah. sean and veronica okay and they just got engaged they're the couple i did the song for and then the woman from morocco um and uh, richard and uh, aida uh. so those are some people that i walk with the most an english couple also um um stephen and Marcy. Wow, that, that, what a list of friends you have made <laughs> in a two week period. Probably become lifelong friends. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, and, oh, oh, and the guy from Spain, um, Carlos Yeah. from Spain, we walked a lot together. We've, we're, we're brothers. Mm -hmm. Now, did you listen to a lot of music while you were walking? Or did you sing to yourself during those moments uh, of solitude? A little bit. In fact, one day I was—I thought I was in a moment of solitude, and I was singing kind of aloud because I didn't think it was around. And this woman deliberately snuck up on me, <laughs> you know, and went. That woman from France. I walked with her for a while. <laughs> and was it a particular song you would start singing while you were out walking? Not necessarily. It's just whatever would come to me. Yeah. And sometimes it was a a, a round. That used to be sung for hikers. Oh. Hi ho, anybody home? Eat nor drink nor money ever, but still I will be merry. Hi ho, one of those rounds of three person thing. Wonderful. It's really a good walking song. It paces. Well, it would have been so fun to walk with you. <laughs> what a joy it is to meet you. My and... great pleasure. Wow, this has been so much fun. Do you want to close us out with a song? As you can probably tell, Harold is one of the most positive people I have ever met. Here's Harold one last time with another original song called Share the Dream, Harold Payne. There's a winding road where I learned to run where the race is long But it can be won With every step we're taking With every choice we're making With every bend in the road We get stronger We can reach up We can reach out can show this world what we're all about We can do anything we put our minds to We can do anything we want to be Hey, hey, we must believe We can share the dream There's a dead end street Lights fading ahead.
ahead is my future waiting Beyond the doubts and the fears I can see it Oh, I can see it We can reach up We can reach out We can show this world what we're all about We can do anything we put our minds to We can be anything we must believe We can share the dream Hey, we can share the dream We can share the dream Walk in the Camino Share the dream Oh We can share the dream We can share the dream we can reach up, yeah We can reach up We can reach out We can show this world what we're all about We can do anything we put our minds to We can be anything we want to be Hey, hey We must believe We can share Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. So I hated this. You know, it was tough, but I had to do it. This has been wonderful, Joy. One of one of the highlights of, of my Camino life. Thank you so much for coming to the Camino Cafe podcast, for sharing Tucson Tuesday here. So we'll be back with another episode soon. So bye, everyone.